Welcome back to Knockdown Jay. I'm here with my man, Chris Broussard, licking his wounds after last week's beatdown, courtesy of your boy. Broussard, how you feeling? You feeling confident today? I'm feeling great. <laughs> you the one got the beat down. What are you all talking right. about? All right, all right. We need Let's to start to all point. over with the truth. How about that? <laughs> Let's get started. Chris, uh, the Los Angeles Lakers, not in the playoffs, but still one of the most fascinating no teams in the league. Chris, I don't know. Uh, Ty Lu, Monty Williams, I'm just going to ask you, is this Lakers head coaching job even a good job right now? Well, it's always a good job to coach LeBron James. And I know that comes with a lot of headaches. It stressed Ty Lue out. He had to go to the hospital because of it, right? <laughs> Take some time off. So I'm not saying it's not stressful, but Shaq brought problems, right? Coaching Shaq. How about Kobe? Yeah. There were problems. Michael Jordan gave problems to Phil Jackson. Didn't want to run the triangle. They're always superstars bring issues they bring different challenges than a bunch of role players who just want to do whatever the coach says LeBron's not unique in that regard and on top of that with all the challenges you get you also get the great benefit of having a chance to win a championship any coach any coach who doesn't want the challenge of coaching a great player like LeBron James I don't want you because you're not built for this number one Number two, what makes the Lakers' job right now not a good one is that is the front office Man, situation. Yeah. Not LeBron. The front office situation. Who's the president? Yeah. Who's running basketball operations? What did we say about Luke all year? Magic and Palinka didn't hire him. Right. Rob Palinka, I'm talking about, they didn't hire him. So if, if things go south... Luke's going to pay the price. Well, if I'm a coach and the Lakers hire me and then three weeks later bring in a new president who I'm not connected to, I'm not tied to, now I could be the scapegoat again. They, the Lakers are doing this backwards, and that says a lot about their organization. Go out, solidify your front office, hire a president, or if it's going to be Rob Palinka, announce Rob Palinka as president and hire a GM under him, then go hire your coach. And the challenge of coaching LeBron, it disappears if you have a strong front office because if LeBron, say, has an issue with the coach, the front office can say, look, he's your coach. You're here for the next three years. So is he. If you're going to win, it's with this guy. That's what Pat Riley did with Eric Spolstra. It resulted in two titles. So you just have to – the Lakers don't have strong leadership right now. It's not LeBron James that's the problem. It's Jeannie Buss and the way they're running things right now. Jeannie Buss is a major problem. I think we would agree. Uh, I don't know if she's in over her head or what uh, running the show, but they do need a president because if I'm looking at taking the Lakers' job, what's the game plan this summer? Are we trading all the young guys? Who's on the table? Who's on the market? What are we doing as our free agent pitch? Well, you are going – right. The Clippers across town have a much better pitch than the Lakers. You guys sell glitz and glamour and Hollywood and the beaches and LeBron. We're going to sell grit and hardcore tenacity. Look at that comeback well, we just made against the Warriors. Better front office. Better front office. D- guys who were kind of undervalued. Better the coach. Lakers had Lou Williams, Chris. Right. And they let him go. And Lou Williams now going to be the sixth man of the year again. I don't know this is a great job right now. There's just too much uncertainty. And don't forget, you just say coaching LeBron's great. The Rich Paul angle. This is a challenge. Is Rich Paul going to want to shove more of his guys in into the Lakers and say, hey, we need to take this guy on? But that's LeBron my point. And just, it, LeBron's 34 and a half. That's okay? my point. A strong front office won't let an agent, Rich Paul or otherwise, come in and run their team. Unless there was some handshake, wink, nod deal when LeBron came here. Hey, me and Rich. Well, that uh, would be gone. With magic. Who brought him here? Uh, that guy's gone. gone. Yeah. So this is a chance. So you're going to be the guy to stand up to LeBron and Rich Paul? This Arguably is a ch- the most well, powerful you, agent and you, the most powerful player in the league? Why are you running a basketball team if you can't stand up to a player mm-hmm. and an agent? I'm not saying be adversarial. I want the input of LeBron. I want the good relationship with Rich Paul, no question. But I'm not going to let you run my organization. I want to hear LeBron out. What are you looking for in a coach? Who do you like out there? What do you think about You know, some of our offseason moves could be? I'm taking it all in, but I'm making the final decision, and it might disagree with what you're saying. That's what David Griffin did. Well, that's a perfect pivot to the next question, Chris. David Griffin named GM of the Pelicans. New Orleans, of course, has Anthony Davis, who has said he's played his last game. He said his goodbyes. He wore his uh, Looney Tunes (laughs) T-shirt. Oh, boy. Um, So do you think David Griffin in New Orleans means – 
that Anthony Davis is more or less likely to land with the Lakers? Oh. I Look, I think there's still a chance he ends up with the Lakers, but I would say Griffin's place there makes it less likely. Interesting. Not that he's not going to end up there. So Griffin, LeBron, who worked together in Cleveland, now Griffin's going to say, eh, no, you're not getting AD. because Is he working I, for LeBron now? Well, hold on, hold on. I mean, seriously, like, he, his job, David Griffin's job is to improve the New Orleans Pelicans. True. He couldn't care less about improving yeah. the Los I'm Angeles sure Lakers. he's heavily invested in the Pelicans for the next decade, right? We know these GMs. Come on, they a couple-year job. He's on to the next one. Wait, Chris, wait, wait. wait. I'm a- David Griffin could have held out, could have held off on accepting the Pelicans job Maybe he if knows. he was really interested in the Lakers Maybe he job. Maybe Genie's bus already got somebody in there. He right? didn't even talk with them, to my knowledge, and, and it hasn't been reported. So I'm just saying Griffin, he's got a great relationship with LeBron and Rich Paul. Yes. But... He's working for the he Pelicans. He, he has no interest in making anybody else better. Yeah, of course, he could be a double agent. I'm kidding. That's a joke. I but mean, he, here's the thing. Though. I don't think the you're Lakers, joking. No, no. We've talked about this in depth, Broussard. The Lakers' best shot at a star. You said it last week. I agree. Is Anthony, Anthony Davis. Davis. Right. There ain't no fallback if David Griffin stiffs LeBron and Rich Paul and says, we're not, we're sending Anthony Davis elsewhere. If it's a better deal for the Pelicans, I'm not – trust me, I know David Griffin. I've known David Griffin since he was working in the public relations department for the Phoenix Suns. He's a tough customer. He's not going to just hand – Of course not. Nobody's saying that. If it's a tie – He's sending Anthony Davis somewhere else. Well, okay, if but, it's a better deal for the Pelicans, he's definitely sending Anthony Davis somewhere else. But then we get else. to the point of this other deal, this deal that doesn't exist, is Anthony Davis signing in that other place long term? Because he has said he wants to be in the with the Lakers. Has he? he publicly, uh, has he said well, that? Well, he hasn't said that publicly. And they haven't said, they in. didn't even say that to the Pelicans. He's that he definitely wants Lakers. Okay, Anthony Davis wants he, to be Lakers are number yeah. one on his list. But it's not Lakers or bust for Anthony, Anthony Davis. Davis. Behind the scenes, the chatter is he's going to be in Space Jam 2. I'm assuming that's out there or something. He's going to want to be with the Lakers. He ain't going to sign in like 28 other teams. Maybe Boston. Well, maybe he, the he's, Knicks. He's, that's, he's, there's been talk that he doesn't want to go to Boston. Okay, he doesn't want to go to Boston. The, so Knicks, them the Knicks, if the Knicks get the first or second pick, maybe they can know, make maybe. an offer to... Uh, New Orleans that might trump what the mm-hmm. Lakers get. Okay, look, and so I'm, we're I'm, Lakers I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it's impossible for the Lakers to get him because if Kyrie Irving leaves Boston, I, if I'm Danny Ainge, I'm not giving up Jason. Now, I don't know if Danny will shoot yeah. those craps, but I'm not doing that for a guy that could be a one year right. rental. So it keeps but, coming back to the Lakers. Well, but we we don't we don't we have to see the landscape from Boston True. yet. Even without Jason Tatum, a Jalen Brown, maybe a Gordon Hayward. A, a Marcus Smart or, or you know, a Terry Rozier draft picks. Like, David Griffin has to look at what's going to make my franchise better, what deal. And for the Lakers, is Brandon Ingram, I don't want to say damaged goods. I think, you know, when blood clots in the arm aren't as dangerous right. as no, those no. in the legs. But that does make it a little bit questionable. Right, let me come back to this. When- and now Kyle Kuzma. Kyle Kuzma's not a franchise player. No, of course not. Lazo Ball hasn't shown us anything to believe he's a franchise Can player. I get so a what, what all do the Lakers have? I want to come back to February when the Pelicans reportedly would not pick up the phone to talk no. to the Lakers. Okay? And then when they did allegedly pick up the phone, they said, we want everybody in four first-round picks. Griffin's not going to be that standoffish. The way no, these other guys right. So I, that's why I believe David Griffin in New Orleans helps the Lakers in their quest for Anthony Davis. Whoever was running New Orleans, if it was back to Dell Dimps and those oh, guys. Gosh. But seriously. Where is Dell Dimps right During now? the summer. You're working at Dunkin' Donuts? During the, new, the off season, if it was the same front office, office, they would begin talking with the Lakers in the oh. summer. The issue was we're not trading him there before the deadline. There was no reason to trade him in February. That's what it was. It wasn't just being upset with the Lakers. Yeah, that was a part of it. But come off season, they would have been willing to engage the Lakers along with the Knicks, the Celtics, and any other teams that may want to get in well, this. Let's just what if Chicago oh, wants team. to throw? What if Chicago got a lot of young, p- young Anthony pieces? Davis did yeah, it's Chicago. a big city. It's a big market. Obviously, a great history. So I'm just saying there are other things. I'm not saying it's impossible for the Lakers. I'm saying David Griffin is not going to give Anthony, give the Lakers any type of break. It may I have to be a three that, yeah. or four team deal. And right now, 
Who in that Lakers front office is capable of putting together a three or four team deal? Rich Paul, when, the guy who knows. Well, Andy Rich Griffin. maybe would have to go out and try to help orchestrate it, yeah. you know, if, to be honest, because yeah. agents do do that sort of thing. Are you ready to move on to the best player in the NBA? We're going to talk about well, Kevin Durant. Oh, oh. Yes, we are going to talk about Kevin He's Durant. He's in the running. It's up for grabs. I'm saying grab it. I don't think that's the topic here, but uh, you want to fire off this question well, to me? Look, or, I mean, listen. I, what is going on? Kevin Durant has averaged 12 shots a game in this these first two games with the Clippers. Furthermore, Kevin Durant, over the last month and a half of the season, okay, March and April, 17 games total. He averaged 13 shots. He went from shooting 19 shots a game or close to 19 to shooting 14 shots a game or close to 14. It was 13.8 or something like that. So he dropped five shots a game. His scoring went down to 20 points a game yeah. from like 27. What is going on with KD? Yeah. So I will, I'll be at the game tonight. I hope you will be I'm at I'm going Staples. Sunday, not tonight. Uh, Easter Sunday, huh? Yeah. Okay. So my theory here, Chris – is that Kevin Durant is testing the Golden State Warriors. He is saying to them, all I hear is I'm going to New York and the Warriors don't need me. The Splash Brothers will go back to the way it was when they won 73 games. And I believe Kevin Durant... Is he Durant, really hearing that? Or is that just how he I mean, feels? We know Kevin Durant has rabbit ears. Uh, maybe but but how, how, how many have you heard? Is that out there? I don't know that that's out there. I'm floating my I, I do know this. KD does feel that. He does feel like... The, the Warriors feel like we made you. You need us. Right. You know, not made him. He was, fans, obvious, he was obviously he, a great player, but, he, you know, we made you a champion. Fans on social media feed that. The media, I think, kind of feeds that a little bit. And well, I, all, that's always going to be there. Yeah, and if that, you look, if I don't you care how many his with pre- the and post-All-Star splits are dramatic. I mean, he just stopped shooting the basketball. Right. He had eight shots and nine turnovers in game two. And I think he's testing the Warriors, and I think he's saying – Guys, I want you to come to me the way you came to me in the Hamptons and said, we need you. We need you, KD. You flew across the country to recruit me, and now here I am in your backyard, and you're not showing me the love. And I think the Warriors need to come to Kevin Durant and say, we need you, Kevin. It's on us. We came out of our element. We moved out of our comfort zone, and we messed it up. We need you back. And I think Kevin Durant, this is why I give a chance that he signs a one plus one, Chris. We need you back. Like need they, you back. They've been telling him all year, we need you. But are they showing him? Are they showing him? What do you want him to do? Run plays for Kevin Durant. Get him on the block against Patrick Beverly. The head Get coach. Get him the ball. The head coach just said, I want Kevin Durant taking 20 or 30 shots. That's not, that's not, what, what? Get him the ball. What, does he have to say, I want you taking 50? Maybe he wants, maybe <laughs> he's he getting Kevin Durant the, the ball. Chris, you know. I, I want to hear what Kevin Durant needs yeah. to hear. Chris, you know, you go home and maybe you take your wife a nice bouquet of flowers. You put them on the table. Here you go, honey. And then you go on and do your work and you watch your NBA. And you do all the right things and say all the right things, but you're not showing the love. I think, and again, this is just speculation, Kevin Durant is not First feeling all, the, the love from the Warriors. He, I think he wants to be embraced. People act like it's over. You got uh, guys at this network, ESPN, all saying, He's gone. It's done. It's the Knicks. It's done. Maybe Kevin Durant likes it and has fun. How much fun does he have right now? I don't think he's having fun. He does not look joyous out there. He and hasn't those looked quotes, joyous, though, for a few years, to be honest. I mean, I think he was joyous collecting those MVPs in the finals. Yeah, he but he also daggers said over LeBron he also, and LeBron's grill. He also is quoted as saying, I won the championship, and it was like, uh, okay. Yeah, you know what I mean? Love. Like, he kind of played down. Played and, it. I, 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 look, I get you. Everybody wants to be wanted. I'm just saying... They they want Kevin. All this stuff you're talking about is periphery. It's us in the media talking about it. It's not the Warriors. Believe me, the Warriors want Kevin Durant. He knows they want Kevin Durant. Well, Draymond the Green players earlier want this year Kevin Durant. against I That's think the Clippers That's Draymond here. Green. That's one player. They suspended him because he was such a jerk right. to Kevin Durant. That's my point. Mm -hmm. Isn't that showing you love? This guy's won three championships with us, but we're going to suspend him for something that really wasn't suspendable well, we shouldn't have suspended him for cuss going at a teammate one sentence going at a teammate. we don't need two time you. finals mvp is not a teammate best player in the nba not just a teammate. he's a teammate just like steph is a teammate and so on and so I forth mean, come on and i'm not saying it was right for draymond i'm just saying 
typically that's not a, something you suspend a player for. They did it. That's showing Kevin Durant yeah. the love. Ke- Steph, Steph, uh, Steve Kerr saying, I want him shooting 20, 30 times. Who doesn't want to hear yeah. that? Well, you, you reminded Who, what me. What basketball? You, you know, you don't think Michael Jordan would have loved to hear a coach say, I want him shooting yeah. 30 times? You Kobe reminded Bryant? me. Of Kobe Bryant in the Sun series, right? He had what? Well, 50 that's the in a game. only reason I'm not completely shutting down your theory. I think Kevin Durant's better than that. I don't think Kevin Durant will pull a stunt like this, especially in the playoffs. Like, oh, I'm not gonna shoot the ball. Let's see what you can do without me. I think he's more of a winner than that. The only reason I won't shut it down is because Kobe Bryant did do that against Phoenix Game Seven. We know years back. He, he was getting a lot of flack for shooting too much. And he decided not to shoot in the second half of that game. And it cost him. The difference is Kobe Bryant did it for one half. Right. right. You're talking about Kevin Durant month. doing it for two months? Yes. Well, so you really think it, that? You made a great point with Kobe. People were calling him selfish, right? I think right. that was exactly what happened. And he took three shots in the second half. People are saying the Warriors don't need Kevin Durant. He ruined the NBA. I think there's Kevin Durant is showing them, you guys need me. I'm telling you right now, they're not beating the Rockets without Kevin Durant being MVP well, finals not, Kevin Durant. not if like, Kevin Durant's going to be on the team and then and sabotages and not play. I mean, <laughs> I'm so, not going that far. But, but the old Warriors, the old Warriors that Kevin Durant joined, that team was capable of beating the Rockets. But if it's going to be thrown on us like glam, a lot like of out of the blue, and I'm still yeah. here, but I'm not going to be myself, I'm going to be a role player. No, they're not because it's going to be jacked up. I think Kevin Durant's better than that. But I'm look, I, it's a mystery. Why all of a sudden? Because Steph, like Kevin Durant tried to explain it like we're playing differently. They the are. last two months. It we, looked well, it. Well, he is. He said we're playing differently. You know, the ball's more spread. He's the only one whose shots are down. Boogie's shots weren't down. Steph and Clay's shots weren't down. I don't know how to explain it. I mean, you got a theory. Again, I think I like this. I think he's better than that. I'll quickly ask this. Do you believe right now the Warriors could be in some trouble against the Rockets in the next round? Yeah, I still favor the Warriors, but they're going to have their hands full. First of all, a lot of people are saying Houston's not better than they were last year. They look better. They're way better they right now. Better. They, they weren't the first better. half of the season. Utah They're is a new no team. slouch. They're they are dismantling Utah. <laughs> Utah. I mean, that is no to do this to Utah is no joke. So, yeah, they got a great chance yeah. to beat the Warriors. Now, I, I would say right now I'm probably 55-45 Golden State. I, but let's uh, all right. Let me quickly move on to the Rockets now. Um, maybe it's because they're killing the Jazz and it's unwatchable. I don't find joy watching the Houston Rockets because James Harden dribbles the ball 600 times a game. They run the exact same play ad nauseum. It just becomes boring. It's crossover, 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 drive, either floater or step back three or alley-oop to Capella every single time. And to me, that's a little boring. I like pace and space. I like watching the Warriors. And you're so stewing, you like, and you're going to kill me right Who else do you like Come watching? Come at me, bro. Other than the Warriors, who else you like watching? I like Kyrie Irving down the stretch. He is nice. Kyrie Irving. Kyrie t- ain't handling it like he James does, Harden. But he's not dribbling 600 times a game. And he's if you 557. 553, I, I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, look. I like Portland. Damian Lillard, man. he is. I, I'm having more fun watching Damian Lillard than I am the Houston Rockets. Damian Lillard look, is Lillard's going, going to another level. There's no doubt. He's unbelievable. I, You're not alone. A lot of people feel that wow. way about Harden. I, I love watching him. Hey, he's a great saying, player. I'm he not is. Saying, I'm not Incredibly saying I love watching him more than I liked watching, you know, uh, Michael Jordan or Steph Curry or something. But I love watching to s- because I understand how difficult it is to do what he's doing. For you to come down time after time after time. They know what's coming. And <laughs> shake a dude up with your handle. You're not the most, the fastest guy no. in the world, but you're somehow able to get around him or create space. The step back three, his three-point shot is so pure. It's incredible. Right. Like, I, I like watching it. Like, it's not the most artistic thing. It might be the difference between watching Muhammad Ali in his prime and say, uh, I don't want to say Mike Tyson because it's always fun to see somebody knock somebody out. But <laughs> it's just not as artistic. Yeah. But I understand how difficult it is to do what he's doing, and I'm in awe. Yeah. I don't want to act like awe. I'm poo-pooing what James Harden's doing because he's incredible. He, 
I had Giannis as the MVP. Harden is looking I'm like the Giannis. MVP. I think Giannis uh, is going to get it. And, and guarding him is difficult. But just from my point of view watching it, it's just it's gotten a little tiresome. And, and I'm a little nervous that if the Warriors get extinguished, we're seeing colossal ratings drops already. No LeBron in the postseason. Right. If the Warriors get knocked out in the second round, I, I, I don't think like every night out here in L.A., 6 o'clock, I'm like, I got to get home, watch the NBA f- uh, Finals, Conference Finals, Rockets, uh, Blazers. That, I just don't know. And I'm a well, huge I, NBA look, guy. I'll give you this. For the casual fans such as yourself. Yeah. The, 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 not the real fan, but the charts. For the casual fans, I do think there'll be a drop. Because I'm enjoying the playoffs now without LeBron. Obviously, I love to see him in it, but I'm enjoying it just as much yeah. as I would if he were in it. But the obviously, the casual fan yeah. is not. Uh, one, and I think it'd be the same thing if the Warriors are gone. I do think there'd be that same thing. But I think it'd be great for the NBA and the hardcore fans because – there would be an air of mystery. We wouldn't know would it be a Milwaukee, Boston, Toronto, Houston, maybe, like you said, some, from the other side of the bracket, San Antonio. I mean, it, But you know what's going to be a bigger story than Rockets, Blazers, game one? Oh, Kevin Durant just unfollowed Curry on Instagram. Like, that's going to be the story. I'm not even making that up. It's going to be all, where's Kevin Durant going? Because he ain't staying if they don't win. One last quick note. Well, Does any so team sure? in the NBA whine as much as the Houston Rockets? Dude, it is un. Bearable. I mean, if because they expect to call every single time. If Harden misses a shot, he's like, "Where's the foul?" Doesn't go Chris Paul. Where's the foul? Golden State whines a little bit, but they nothing like a the little bit. PJ Tucker, Kevin Durant, Austin and, Rivers, and Draymond Austin Green. Rivers wants Michael Jordan whistles. I mean, that's what's happening out here. It's stop, insufferable. Stop ripping the Rockets. Right. Sorry, guys. Kill me in the that's YouTube way comments. Off. Uh, all right. He loves when you kill me. Let's wrap up here. Goat Sard McIntyre, uh, Milwaukee Bucks, Boston Celtics, second round. Who you got? Milwaukee in six. Woo. Look. Eric Bledsoe locking down Kyrie? Not locking him down, but making it tough Can't lock down Kyrie. Eric Bledsoe was on my first team all defense. You can't, nobody can lock down Kyrie, but he will make it tough on him. Here's the deal. Because people look, inevitably, they're going to look back and say, Boston beat Milwaukee in seven last year without Kyrie. Without Kyrie. That's probably where you were Tatum was a rookie. I ain't going there. You don't know where I'm going. Okay. All right. (laughs) That's true. I never know where you're going. That look, last year the Celtics in Milwaukee was nowhere near as good as they are. We know that, right? And Brad Stevens, despite not having Kyrie, had a humongous coaching advantage over the interim coach in Milwaukee. All right, huge. so so that that was huge. And then in the second round against Philadelphia, he had a humongous coaching advantage over Brett Brown. This season, this series against Indiana, which Boston isn't looking all that great. They do not look phenomenal. They have a talent advantage because Kyrie is there and Victor Oladipo for the Pacers is not. There's no advantage against yeah. Milwaukee. Talent-wise, I'd say it's a wash. Both teams are close, but I take Giannis as the better player over Kyrie, even though I think Kyrie is more clutch. And then the coaches, it's a wash. Brad, Mike Budenholzer is, the, is a great coach. Mike Budenholzer, Brad Stevens is a wash? Yes. No Where question. are you doing your wash? Who like is the coach? Cent Who is the coach? Get out of here. Who? Stop. Brad Who? Stevens went to the finals game seven last year in the East without Kyrie Irving. Could have took down LeBron. Are you kidding me? Mike Budenholzer. Can he win a big-time playoff series first? Just give me one. One. Has, this what, what big-time playoff series has Brad Stevens won? Uh, he went to the Eastern Conference Finals last year. What big... Mike Budenholzer took Kyle Korver, Damari Carroll, Al Horford, teams and Jeff joke. Teague oh, to the Eastern Conference and Finals. They got swept. I by know, LeBron. but they dusted he out. Didn't, he didn't have the talent that Boston had, and he won. You just said they had four All Stars. He won. He didn't have talent. He won, sorry. Stop. Look, stop. Let me, stop. He won sixty games. All right, sixty games with a bunch of role players. <laughs> got to the Conference Finals. You said winning a big series for that Atlanta team with that roster. Those were big series wins. He took a team that had the 16th best record last year in the league, now has the first best record. He took a team that couldn't shoot threes last year. Now they make more threes than anybody. He took a team that couldn't defend last year. Now they were the only team in the top five defensively and offensively. What in the world? Brad Stevens has had a bad year, dude. He has. A bad year, no doubt. 
And, but, but you body laugh, of work, but you body laugh. Of work matters. What body of and work? Actually, we need to go back to Jason Kidd, who was what, awful. What last body year. of work? Brad Steve, I don't know. Should we go back he's to been the, he's when co- he took a bunch of kids from the Midwest? No, we should not because final... we don't care about college. This is the oh, NBA. Coaching, baby. coaching doesn't matter. This Just is the, the NBA. NBA. Okay. All right. Take that one to the YouTube comments. I gave him a blue chip dude in Kyrie, and the whole season was a mess. Well, I, you, you're blaming it on Brad Steve? Yeah. Oh. I'm blaming it on Brad Stevens. You wow. want to blame it on Kyrie Irving? Well, Kyrie Irving blamed it on the other players. He didn't blame Brad Stevens. I'm, well, Brad Stevens isn't that confrontational. And he needs to be more confrontational. I didn't think Buck Celtics would be this heated. Now, I do a Coming Up Winners Gambling podcast, myself and Andrew Lynch. We like the Bucks and Celtics as great value to win the East. If they show up here and the Milwaukee Bucks get their butts kicked by Boston, which very well could happen. No, it couldn't happen. Because the Bucks are favored. You they're don't think it could happen? Oh, kicked. because they're dusting Detroit and just destroying the Detroit Pistons, who look like a G League What's team. What's Indiana look like? Indiana finished the season 8-14. and 14. Does it, They were still a good team. 8-14 and 14 is a good team? I mean, uh, they without struggled. They player? lived to the finish, but they still got there without Oladipo. Without Oladipo, they're not much better than, Listen, than Detroit. Detroit loses Blake Griffin, and they lose the first two games by 3,000 points, okay? Let's right, not compare right. Indiana to Detroit. I think, actually, the Bucks are overvalued here because of what's happening against Thon Maker uh, and the Detroit Pistons. Like, come on, dude. They're, they're running plays for Thon Maker. Like, come on. It's a little bit much. I don't even know where you're going. What, okay. are, you, what are you talking Celtics. about? Celtics. <laughs> Celtics. Celtics in six. You're going Bucks in? Six. You're wrong. All right. Uh, is that it? Yeah, this right. is so much fun, folks. I know you're happy we're back. He's a glutton Chris for Chris I'm like Rocky in Rocky IV against the, He's the Russian. I'm Rocky. You know who wins that battle. You like that wing? I'm just going to let you go ahead because nobody believes you. Nobody watching believes you. Okay. Go what ahead, part? The Kevin more. Durant, the Bucks Celtics. You're, you're, you're who? Can we, you're talk, who can we talk Orlando, Toronto? Do we have time for Orlando, Toronto? <laughs> All right. Signing off. Knockdown Jay. Peace. See you next week.